Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of uh, The Tea with Pyazen. Solo. And today, we want to respond to questions. You guys have been listening and we've, got, we've gotten overwhelming uh, comments and questions. We put them together here and we shall be going through each one of them. So, your voice is important. So, let's get down with it. Awesome. Wow. This is uh, Njoroge. He's asking, what do, you do, what do you believe are the most important qualities or habits for achieving success in any field? And how can someone develop those qualities in themselves? I'm going to repeat. What do you believe are the most important qualities or habits for achieving success in any field? And how can someone develop those qualities in themselves? There are many, I'll pick three. First one, hunger, desire to succeed in the first place. If you don't desire it, it's a non-starter situation. Mm. You have to be hungry. Um, I find a lot of people say they want something, but they're, they're really not hungry enough to go after it, because they're comfortable. Mm. Their bills are paid, they eat well. Uh, so, you know, that's a point. Mm they're okay that's mm -hmm. number one mm -hmm. how do you cultivate that i honestly i i feel that's something you're either born with or not mm -hmm. um, is the first way to have hunger the only other way to have it if you're not born with it is to be thrown into an adversity scenario that wakes you up and you realize uh, like in my situation no one owes you jack. <laughs> then you have to get busy about creating value yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. That's your motivation. Mm -hmm. Why do you wake up at... I mean, it's, it's Eid. Mm -hmm. Okay, we didn't know it was going to be a public holiday until mm -hmm. maybe 48, mm -hmm. 36 hours ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I left my family in the house asleep, enjoying the public holiday. Uh, I was up before 6 a.m. Mm. to get ready to come here. Mm. Why on earth would I do that? Mm. As opposed to cancelling and staying home and enjoying the public holiday. Because mm. I'm committed to something. Because I'm hungry for more. Because mm. I know what I'm doing uh, is my calling. I have purpose. Mm. Okay, mm. so hunger is number one. Number two is discipline. Mm. You have to be disciplined, mm. and that that goes from <laughs> from your diet, what you eat, how you keep yourself, mm. your body, how you manage yourself. Discipline is all about management. Famous guy once said, "What you don't manage, you lose, or what mm. you manage poorly, you lose. What you manage well grows." Mm. You keep and it grows. Mm. Uh, diet, health, mm. your time. I am ruthless with my time management. Uh, still causes beef in, in my house. Because <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mess around with time. Which I jokingly tell guys in the office, time is money and money buys land. Mm. When you think about it in those terms, then you, you understand the value of time. Yeah, uh, so discipline is, is everything. Mm -hmm. your, your commitment to your craft to be better, to spend the time, put in the hours, mm -hmm. uh, to keep time, to, mm -hmm. to apologize when you screw up. That takes discipline mm -hmm. because it has to do with self-accountability. Mm -hmm. For you to say, I'm sorry I messed up, means you take account. Mm -hmm. Accountability yourself, as opposed to blaming everyone else. Why? Because nobody owes you jack. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> life is a lot simpler when you understand that, right? So discipline is number two. And I would say number three would be, uh, you could call it attitude, likability, 
which has to do with your relationship building skills. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to be a likable human being. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult for you to succeed in life mm -hmm. if you can't get other human beings on your side, on your agenda, mm -hmm. on your vision. That has to do with likability. Mm -hmm. And likability has to do with being a decent human being. Mm -hmm. um, and being a decent human being or being likable does not mean that everybody likes you or loves you because uh, that's impossible. Mm. Your commitment to your craft, your, your calling, your discipline, all that stuff will immediately separate you from other people mm. and that's okay. Mm. But your ability to build relationships, to be likable mm. is hardly ever spoken about and I think for me is the most critical, mm. that's been the most critical um, one of the most, I'd say maybe even number two for whatever I consider to be success in my life, where if I do a self-audit, it's, it's a very personal thing. Um, my ability to uh, keep a relationship or cultivate one has been the primary engines behind any success I've had, mm -hmm. including Pius sitting here. Uh, we met uh, through a mutual friend mm -hmm. Uh, this is actually a very good opportunity <laughs> to share this story. If we haven't shared it before, how I met Pius. You guys know who Pius is. I hope you do. If you don't, shame on you. Google and understand w which room you're sitting in. <laughs> okay. So, how did I meet Pius? Um, ah, man, this is such an excellent uh, example of what I'm talking about. I met Pius through a mutual friend. His name is Andrew Mothe Gitao, yes. the owner and founder of AMG Realtors. Yes. Andrew and I uh, were friends, competitors, yes, but <laughs> friends. Uh, and actually, I'd like to take this opportunity to give a big shout out to Andrew uh, of AMG. AMG. Uh, amazing human being, one of the most likable human beings I've ever <laughs> met. Talking about likability. <laughs> Andrew knows every, I have not met a, sim, a single human being that does not know Andrew yes. and thinks well of Andrew. Yeah. Andrew and I met uh, selling land in Nanyuki through another mutual friend named Musioki Mbathi. Yeah. Shout out to Musioki, Sioux or Soxi, <laughs> as some call him. Uh, so, uh, Soxi int introduced us because we were trying to do a deal in Nanyuki and uh, Andrew drove us in his in his tiny ramshackle <laughs> thing. Almost got stuck a couple of times. Those days? Yeah, in Karyonga. Di different in story right now. Oh my God, yeah. And Andrew is, uh, yeah, uh, times, times have changed. Times, times have changed. Uh, so I met Andrew and on a number of occasions since, since then, we'd meet, have coffee, have lunch, whatever. On two occasions, Andrew, uh, because I needed land for specific customers who asked for land in a very particular location that I didn't have. And because we only sell what we own, we're not mm. agents, brokers, mm. I need capital to buy mm. so that I can sell. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a cash hungry business. Mm. I didn't have capital because I'd already bought inventory somewhere else. These very important customers to me asked me for money uh, or, or rather for, for land in a particular location. I didn't have it. I did my research, I knew Andrew, I had, Andrew had some land somewhere there. Mm. So I called Andrew, I was like, hey dude, uh, I need land in this area, do you have anything? Ah, yeah, yeah, I have, I have one, two, three. Why, you, I sell you one. I was like, man, I would love to buy, but I don't have the cash to pay you. Mm. But I have a customer with, with money, and me, I'm not an agent or a broker, mm. I will not do business that way. And they, they've only come to me because <coughs> they expect the title deed will be in my name. Now, if I wait until I have the cash to buy from you to sell to them, they may not be here. Mm -hmm. The opportunity, you know, short window of opportunity. Andrew says, ah, dude, you, you took the thing. I'll transfer it to you, sell to them, pay me after. Wow. You talk about millions of shillings. Wow. He's done that twice. Wow. So talking about likability. Now, if Andrew did not like me as a person, was that deal ever going to happen? No. So fast forward a few, a few years later, he calls me up. He says, 
uh, solo uh, we're buying some land in Nanyuki. Yes. <laughs> it's a hundred acres. It's on a beautiful place with river frontage. It's on Liki River, uh, right behind uh, the Mayan Resort, which had just broken ground. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of buzz about this new resort. In have any of you heard of Mayan? If you haven't, again, shame on you, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in number three, take a, take a bus ride, whatever, go to the Nuki, uh, and, and, and big up to the proprietor of, of the Mayan for, mm -hmm. for, for that, you know, amazing development, because mm -hmm. it changed the landscape in the Nuki at okay. that time. And so, naturally, it piqued my interest. Wow, it's behind Mayan, it's 100 acres, it has river frontage. It's like, wait, 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 how much is that going to cost? It was a hundred million bobs. I was yeah. like, hey, you guy, thank you for that prayer. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, don't worry. You come for uh, breakfast tomorrow. I'll send you the pin drop. I showed up into uh, a, an office at International Life House. Uh, this office happened to be Pius's office. Never met Pius before. Never heard of him in my life. <laughs> uh, he was in there with a few other individuals. I think well, it was eight of us. Yeah in the room, he hosted us for breakfast. And these guys had put together this deal and they were, they were bringing together like-minded people who could pull money together to buy these 100 acres. And I was so honored to be in that room in the first place because of who was there. I won't tell you everyone who was there, <laughs> but it was, it was money. It was, <laughs> uh, this is the kind of rooms you would pay whatever they ask you just to be there. Forget participating in the deal, <laughs> just, even just to serve tea. <laughs> I had a lot of respect for everyone in that room. Like, I'll just put it out. And they were all young, youthful people, which I liked because it was encouraging to me. Mm. And they all thought well of me, which is why Andrew invited me and Pius allowed for me to be present. And we bought the 100 acres together. Mm. We pulled money. And, and that's how I met Pius. Yeah. Was that ever gonna happen if I wasn't likable? We, we, raised, we raised over 100 million in two weeks. Yes. <laughs> I have never raised 8.35, 8 8.5 8 8 something <laughs> million shillings so fast in my life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I was not gonna be left out. <laughs> I just wasn't. Like, I didn't care. My cars were going to get sold. I was going to sell my <laughs> shoes. I, I didn't care. Uh, because I recognize the value in association mm. with Andrew, Pius, mm. and everyone else that was in that room. Mm. And they allowed me to participate. I have friendships and personal relationships with most of those guys today. Yeah. Uh, if, if I called Andrew tomorrow, uh, I know I could do a deal with him. He's my competitor, yes. Mm. Uh, but there's no enmity. No. Uh, and that all has to do with likability. Your attitude in life will determine your altitude. So, um, I'll stick to those three, but that's, that's a topic we could go on about for, for yeah. months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 There's, a, there's a book I read um, when I was in my 20s. Uh, I'm sure you guys have probably come across it. it, it, it it's, it's titled if you want to be a CEO, act like a CEO. And when I read that book, instantly, I started acting like a CEO. And, and, I, and I put it down. Remember, I had defined my success. I put it down that I want to be a CEO by the age of 30. And everything around me was just, inside of me, I was just, acting like not just acting but building this ceo personality and uh i think i became a ceo at 32 uh, which was also a shocker to me because i i think there are things you wish for yourself then they kind of hap happen faster than you you thought <laughs> my my uh, yeah. and and just to to sort of uh give a, a recap what you said success is attracted not pursued success is attracted not pursued whatever success you pursue you cannot sustain it but whatever success you attract 
you find you can you can sustain it uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that success is is first of all birthed inside of us before it is manifest before it manifests publicly so there there is a vision of grand acres is a vision of uh, Goshen acquisition that nobody in this room, even the ones who work for, for Solo, they've never seen. But that vision is inside of him. It is as good as done. There is a success of Nabo that is inside of me that nobody in Nabo and nobody in our clans have ever seen it. But I work towards it every day. You get? And so when that success manifests pu publicly, it will seem like a shocker to people, but it will, it will not be a shocker to me because it, has already, it is already birthed inside of me. Are we together? So, you know, this, this, in this world there are a lot of fake things, fake, fake, fake ni ni cliches, like fake it until you make it. It, that is as fake as it sounds, you know. <laughs> you can't fake success. And the most important thing is character. The thing that was common in the people we called in that room was character. I did not know about uh, Solo's many things you get, eh? but the person who called Solo into that room trusted in his character. And, that's, and you can't go into a hundred million deal with people that you don't trust in their, in their character. So character is the one thing that makes sure that uh, your success is unshakable. It's not faked. You see, you can't, you, can't, you can't fake character. Character is what you do privately when nobody else is seeing. You, know, you get so, and what shapes character is our daily habits, which Solo has spoken about. Today is a, today is a holiday, and I was, I was up, I was in the gym by five. Whether it is a holiday, or it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a working day, they are all the same too, to me. It's that thing that you do consistently, that habit, you get it? Eh? Yeah. That's what really builds your character. And once you, your character is firmed up, your character starts attracting. Because people start, uh, uh, people who are like you start noticing you. Mm. Or people who, you know, if, uh, Solo was saying, sometimes he wonders why are these people who are so distinguished, why are they even interested in him. But what do they see? Character. Work on your character and success will be looking for you. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. Those of you who are watching virtually, we really appreciate you taking time to listen in with the audience here. We are so grateful for the opportunity to share our experiences. Hopefully it adds value to your lives. We hope you'll continue to stay tuned. We'll have more episodes coming up. If you have any questions, please send them through. Make comments, make sure you like the videos and subscribe and share them only with people that you like, please. We we'll look forward to seeing you next time. I am Solomon. And I'm Pius Mushiri, and this is the tea. <laughs>